All right, well, fall is here in Tennessee, and guess what that means for us BMW convertible owners? Uh, we start getting the top fault. And I went through this particular situation about four or five months ago. Uh, I had everything resolved, seemed like it was working good. But now the temperature's changed. Now we uh, can check the location of the uh, sensor, the Hall Effect sensor in the back, the one that when you thump on the uh, back back here, you can get it to reset. I'm not gonna thump it yet, but uh, if you wanna see the other video on the mechanics of it and things to look for before you do what I'm gonna do right now, which is adjust the sensor, then you can go to my YouTube channel and you'll see this very same car uh, going through the mechanics of the convertible top. But what we see, we'll get the computer over here. So you can see on the computer, this is the status of the Hall effects that control the uh, location and the timing of the convertible top. So what we want to have is uh, with the top in this position, with the top fully open, we want to have one and one on these two sensors right here. But what we got is one of them is out of position. And we're going to find out which one it is here in just a minute. But what this gives you is the blinking red top knot lock and you get the display error where it says top knot lock and then as you go down the road it goes bong 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 sometimes it'll come in so what i'm going to do is go back there and tap the back wing and we're going to see if that sensor will drop back in we see which one it is on the screen so we'll know which one we have to adjust and also which way to adjust it to try to get it into position one when we're doing the car so you know how it goes bonk around Try to get it in position. Sometimes it'll bling to tell you. Sometimes it won't. So let's see if we solve the problem. A little bit of thumping, bam. It's in position now. And we no longer have the blinking red light. So it's that lower sensor that is out of position just ever so slightly. So what we're gonna do is pop the uh, convertible top up halfway and we're gonna see which sensor it is. Okay, so we're back and what I did is I Partially put the top up because I want to be able to get to these sensors. So as you can see right here Now with the top partially up the, the sensor position has moved And so the one is the one up top is still on one But the other one is on six and this, That lower one is the one that we're having the problem with so right here is that sensor And what it is is it's out of position just a little bit so watch, if I move it and pull it down just a little off the tab, get it to come down without breaking it, then you'll see that it moves position. So now it's in position five. If I pop it back on where it's supposed to be, then it moves back to position six. So that's definitely the sensor that we're having problems with that's causing us to do our top faults as we're going down the road. So what we need to do is move that sensor a little bit. Let me get us clear in there. So we need to move, basically make this arm think that it's here. So in order to do that, since the arm's going down, we want to move the switch that way so it'll act like I move the arm down. So right here, I'm here, my Winnie dog. Winnie dog's coming to do some work. Come on, Winnie dog. Get him, Sadie. So what we want to do is actually, there's screws right inside of here. One screw, two screws, and I think there's a third one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is remove that sensor and open up the holes a little bit so I can get just a fine adjustment on that switch sensor and then I can move, move it down which will effectively move this this way so we want to make it think that it's going to be in position one a little bit more one word of caution you can see it's kind of up if I turn the car off it should stay in this position but that top can fall and I'll show you what it does so you got to be kind of careful so what we want to do is turn the car off so let's turn it off because we're going to be in position to work Back there, we need the wings up. So let's turn the car off. 
So I'm gonna set the camera over and show you what it does. If you put the key back in, it'll actually drop the top down some. It'll stay up there, but you know, who's to, who wants to risk getting your fingers in the mechanism and then getting your finger cut off just trying to fix it. So what we wanna do is prop up the back. Let's get us a board in there. So it would sit there as long as nobody messes with the car or the car goes to sleep. It might go to sleep and then you'd run into the same thing. So let's say you were working on it and then you go back in and say, oh, I'm gonna cycle it and somebody else is looking at it or something like that, you're liable to get your fingers at it. So let me put the key back in. When I start the, or don't even start the car, I just put the key in. You'll see it start falling. <clears throat> So now with the key back in, I take it back out. You can see what happens. It actually lost its pressure. And so without the board there, this part would close on you. And this part jumped down too. So that's just a word of warning. Go ahead and bring it up, turn the car off, get out, get back in, put the key back in, and it drops the hydraulics. Okay, so we are ready to take our little switch off so we can get it back in position by opening up these holes for these screws just a little bit. And you'll see, if I can get my camera to do right, you'll see what I'm talking about once I get in there. So the first thing we wanna do is take the connector loose so it's back in the back. So I'll reach around the inside of the car with the windows down and see if I can't get that connector took out. There we go. So now we got the connector taken loose off of the switch. And now we gotta take these little screws out. So there's three, looks like three, and we'll see if we can get this connector out. So we got one little bit of screw out, he goes on the back side. And around here is another one. So we're gonna go through the inside compartment and see if we can get to him. It looks like for the one around the back, we're gonna need to get in here with a regular socket and the Torx. number two so it looks like we got one more right down here holding it on right in that little hole right there now we're gonna try a quarter inch ignition wrench on the end of this one because it's so tight in there All right, so we got our little sensor off and you can see it's a sensor covered by a cover. So there's the sensor. And if we look, we can see there's two bolts that hold the sensor to the cover and then there's holes for the cover to get mounted to the car. So we gotta do a little work and we gotta figure out which way we need to do this. But we know when we move the position we pulled it down to get the sensor in the right spot, which means if we keep the this the same in order to achieve the same thing, we need to move this that way because this that thing's hooked to the bar. So we got to move this whole thing and shift it this way in the mechanism. We got to make the hole bigger in this direction, going that way to the right. And this one needs to go up. So we need to cut the hole bigger that way. That way we can move this this way, which is basically the same thing as moving that that way. So we're gonna open these holes up in the right direction, put it back all on there and see what we got. Let me just tell you, it took about 30 minutes to get that little fella off. Ended up using the Torx, of course. So we had the Torx bit. And then we end up using a quarter inch ignition wrench to hold that one to get one of those out. 
and then we end up using the uh, flexible driver to get the other one out. So a couple of tools needed for this little job, but we'll be back in a minute once we get our holes cut out and we'll put this thing back together. So here's my switch. So I needed to rotate downward, which basically means I need to rotate this this way. So what I did is this hole now, I ground that way upward to open it up. And this hole, I went sideways. And so that's gonna allow me to get a little bit of movement on the switch so I can tip the whole thing that direction and see if we can't get it set up. All right, so we got our switch back on and we got our bolts back in, wasn't too bad. But now what I'm looking for is to try to adjust this position. So let me get her in there. So my finger's up here on top. So what we have now is with it loose, you can see the switch, it moves just a little. And that may be just enough movement to get us to where we're right off of that edge. So all I did was open up the holes, the little screw holes right here. The one in the front, you don't have to open up. The one that's down here, it's kind of like a pivot point. So you got one here, and then there's one down on the bottom, if you can see my finger, one underneath the connector. Those are the two that you open up. And what it gives you is just a little bit of movement. If you can see it move, see it tip back and forth, and that may be just enough to allow us to get past this. Let's put our connector back on. Yep. So now we're all back hooked up. So let's check the position of the top again. We'll start it back up, close it down, and then see if we end up with the 1-1 one, one on our position. So we'll get the car started. Go ahead and take your board out at this time and just let it fall a little bit. And we'll fire it back up and see what it does. All right, so we got the car fired back up, switch is back on. The trunk fell down on its own because the, I took the board out. But everything else is sitting waiting. So we're still in position and getting ready to drop in. So you can see right now we're at six and one. That's where we left off before. So what we're gonna do is close the top and see what it does. See if it ends up at one and one. That's with the top fully closed. We went down to one pretty quick that time. So I'm thinking maybe we got it figured out. So now let's just jiggle on it. We're at one and one now. Right where we're supposed to be. So now let's bonk on it and see if it changes anything. So all the bonking. Everything looks like it's sitting good. All right, so just for a test, we'll open her up, make sure that the top goes up, and see what it does. Here we go, this will be the test. Will it go down and everything works? Like you did it. Right back down to one and one. So we're gonna give that a try for a few months and see if everything works. Everything fell right in. No more red light blinging over there driving me crazy. And we're ready for winter time. Well thanks for watching.